Okay, I saw Don't Worry Darling against my better judgment. I didn't want to give this movie any attention because honestly the press around it has annoyed me like no other movie. Um, I am neither pleased nor displeased to report it's very bad. There, that's what I'm gonna say. Um, this, before I even get into th the thematic problems with this movie, there's all kinds of plot holes. There's a lot of the acting choices don't make sense. And a lot of the casting choices were just weird. Um, namely, Harry Styles, Nick Kroll, and Kate Berlant. Who, who cares what they're good at outside of this movie? They should not have been in this. Um, Florence Pugh, she's a great actress. She's really hot. I enjoyed watching her. But, you know... Some of the dialogue made no sense. The world that they've built is inconsistent. And this is a two-hour movie, give or take, a little bit more. And you literally have no idea what the point of it is or what's going on for about 75% of the movie. She distracts you with this with with the soundtrack and it's like every three i don't know every 40 seconds it's a new song from the 1960s and it's like yeah he's a great great songs but it's cut like the trailer and so it even ends with the same don't worry darling thing with the same piano music and it's like i feel like i just watched the trailer for two hours and i still don't have any idea what this is about um, and that's, again, without even getting into the thematic stuff. Olivia Wilde, ugh, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to give this movie more attention than it's already gotten. Anyway, uh, that's what I think about it so far. Have you seen it? Have you heard anything about it? I have not. Um, I've not, I've not had, I wanted to go see it in theaters this week, if not for anything other than to see maybe just how much of a disaster it might be so like i had a morbid curiosity about it i just didn't find the time to do it and after honestly seeing your uh out of theater reaction that you put up on instagram i, I just it only further detracted me because i was like i have only so much time to watch stuff throughout the course of the week and is this what i'm going to choose to spend that time watching especially going to the theater and you know you have to take additional time out of your schedule to, yeah. to do that um maybe i'll wait till it comes out on on, on digital or on blu-ray or whatever but I had a question about this movie, right? Like I've read a lot of reviews, so I did a lot of research at this point. I don't still haven't managed to spoil myself about like what the big reveal is at the end. But from what I've heard a lot of people say, it's one of those movies where for the few people, for the few critics, because like, again, 39% on Rotten Tomatoes as of, I think the 25th of September when I checked it. Um, a lot of critics who don't like the movie and the big reason is not just because like you said, Harry Styles is not, uh, he seemed to be lacking in terms of I don't think he maybe was ready for this leading role, but I, th I think a lot, the perception of this movie also varies because a lot of people who didn't like the movie didn't like the big twist at the end, the big reveal. And then a yeah. the few people who were positive, talking positively about it, said that, oh my God, yeah, you know, it was like it, the, the payoff was worth it, essentially. So the question I have for you is, was the payoff worth it? Was the reveal good enough? And then I think the people who have criticized it have said, that it didn't make any sense. So on it doesn't the make any sense. It really yeah. doesn't make any sense. Um, can we put up a spoiler warning and oh, just yeah. let people um, know? Yeah. Let me do that right now. <laughs> so so let me save you. Me. Let me save you um, <laughs> two hours and fifteen dollars. Um, this takes place in a virtual reality utopia that is created by. What Olivia Wilde has said is a, a character based on Jordan Peterson, um, based on <laughs> the character Chris Pine plays. She's never listened to Jordan Peterson speak. Um, and the idea here is that every single one of the men here is an angry incel type of guy who wants to live a perfect life in a traditional 1960s style world. And the women are prisoners where they have to cook and clean and spend money and 
shop. And I don't know. With all of that, I could just I could just see these actresses being like, "This is a cute top," and enjoy like. If the, if I didn't think that the the actors and actresses enjoyed this as much as uh, the characters weren't supposed to, I think I might have bought it more. Um, and really, it's weird because if it takes place in virtual reality, like it should be a lot more controllable than this. There's these men in red shirts that pop up out of nowhere and take you away and they have to like chase you and like track you down and actually kill you and all this stuff wait in the and virtual world or in the, the virtual world, world. Okay. and it's like why is it real people you know why do they why does actually running like it was just the worst constructed virtual reality thing i'd ever seen where the there's just no sci-fi element to it at all it's just like this is i bet the perfect world that you know, similar to what we were saying about She-Hulk, this is what these toxic men want, isn't it? And one of my biggest criticisms of this is this angry feminist story pivots on one line in the movie, and Florence Pugh, who's just been shown in, outside in the real world, working a 30-hour shift as a surgeon, and not getting enough sleep and complaining about having to go to work the next day. Miserable life that she signed up for. Um, she, when she confronts Harry Styles' character, she goes, I love to work. And it's like, this is one of the common misconceptions of, like, of uh, the, one of the faulty premises of feminism which is that work and a career is some kind of luxury. And this, this woman, who is demonstrably miserable in her life, um, is, you know, the worst thing in the world, I guess, is preparing steak and having your husband, who is Harry Styles, by the way, come home and orally pleasure you first thing in the movie and every day when he gets home from work. I yeah, guess I that's horrible. That in this movie. I I guess that's hell on earth. You know, sorry you have to shop and take dance classes all day. It's just like it's the whole the whole conflict isn't there, and we don't really find out what's so sinister about Chris Pine or about what they're doing. We never find out what the men are up to or what's that's what's the other thing, so right? awful. Because that's the other thing I read a lot of reviews. Like they were like they ultimately set up a lot of questions they just never answer. So oh, you yeah. kind of left with like, what? Why did I just watch? And why did I watch this? Is there? Because because a good thriller, like I, I'll give Was you. Was this great supposed example. to be a thriller? <laughs> well. I don't, I don't know. That's, I assume that's what this was, right? Like, all right, that's how it's been marketed, right? So a good thriller, like the perfect example, I think, is Shutter Island. I think to this day, one yeah, of Shutter my Island's absolute great. favorite thrillers like ever made, Martin Scorsese's probably most underrated movie, and in my it's opinion, probably one of his best movies. Like the ending of that movie... I'll, I'll put up a quick spoiler warning just in case you guys haven't seen it and this is the first time you're hearing about it. <laughs> the ending of that movie resolves the issue by leaning into a character's internal conflict. Yeah. And and what Leonardo and then to this day, people who have watched the movie argue like whether DiCaprio's character was actually sane or in like whether he was. Insane it's a much better movie he, about gaslighting. Yeah, whether he because because the whole thing I'm like you watch that movie to the end and you can then sit around with people you just watched the movie with and debate for an hour, like the consequences of if he willingly went in to get lobotomized at the end or mm -hmm. if he still thought he was living in like this uh, fictionalized reality of 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 his own world. Yeah, and that alone this... generates so much conversation and like just this intellectual curiosity of like what you just watched and then you go watch the movie again and you'll probably notice things you did not notice because now yeah. you have context because everything makes sense for you from the beginning so your 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 perspective on all the events changes absolutely this movie it feels like it leans into the sci-fi side of things like the west world esque almost thing or the matrix but then it all of a sudden it, it, it fumbles the ball on all the sci-fi elements of it and then it doesn't give you much in the way of character 
uh, driven storytelling either. Like, is that no, uh, that's no, that, that's ex- that's absolutely right. Um, yeah. And the thing is, like, as much as it tries to spoon feed you ideology and value values about men and women, like, it doesn't actually tell you what's going on. There's no real evolution. Um, Olivia Wilde's character, by the way, is despicable. Um, and she's supposed to be this, uh, you know, part of the twist at the end, which is that she actually wanted to be there. Uh, because in that, in that world, her kids didn't die. But her kids come and go and on the school bus and everything, and they're part of the simulation. Um, and yet she just smokes and drinks and ignores them. You know, and it's like, you don't actually care about your kids, so why why do you care so much about being here with them? It was just, the whole, none of the character motivations made sense. Um, the backstories aren't even there, and I don't know. It just, I felt like, I just felt like somebody was yelling at me what they had heard a professor say in a class they just got out of, uh, and yet hadn't really considered what the real world actually functions as. It was just, I don't know, it was just, it was angry and it was rooted in all of this hatred. And I don't, I don't think that Olivia Wilde as the wildly successful actress uh, and c- celebrity who's I, like, what, where does, where does any of this come from in her life? It just felt disingenuous in terms of, you know, the perspective. Like, who are you to write this story of oppression? And I think that's why it falls so flat. It's just because it's not there. She doesn't understand what she's writing. Yeah, which, I mean, to be fair, you don't have to have gone through something to know, to to be able to write a good story about it. No. But you certainly need to research it well, talk to the right first like people who have gone through something like it, and gen- then uh, draft a genuine story around like this idea or subject matter you're trying to tackle. It, it's from what you're saying, it feels like she neither has the experience that uh, to to be able to write a narrative like this, to have any kind of reasonable depth to it, mm-hmm. and she hasn't bothered to do the work to to, to actually make a reasonable story out of something like this so no and that's the worst kind of content that i like to that i that not like that i that i have seen or seems to happen a lot these days where like for example for a number of years i would watch like abc would like they just wanted to do a sci-fi show on their network and then so every year they would green light it and the same people apparently would go come up with a new sci-fi concept some half-baked concept that the premise sounds wonderful but then yeah. by the end of the season you you quickly realize they don't know where this thing is going and they yeah. quite only don't care. And these are not, these guys are not in it because they had this really great sci-fi premise that was going to tackle some kind of thing on an allegorical level. Yeah. They're just here to like make a show. And yep. ultimately the payoff is going to be like, it's like lost. Like ultimately they like had no lost. clue where that child, that show was going to end. And yeah. then when it came time to end it, they were like, fuck it. Like we got to do something. So, and then that's why people like to this day, remember that as being one of the worst endings or finales to a show ever. And I think I don't know. I loved Lost, and I think uh, I think the disappointment in the ending is that it was ending because people loved watching that show. Um, last note about Olivia Wilde: I frequently think about um, Edward Norton on the Joe Rogan podcast a while back, and he had this brilliant—I uh, don't know—we'll call it a quote about acting and actors who are in it for the wrong reasons. And he says, like, they're just watching themselves through other people's eyes. And that's the impression that I got from Olivia Wilde's acting, and really the whole thing. The trailer from director Olivia Wilde was the first thing that you're supposed to, like, be like, oh, I guess she's directing. Wow. Um, But in every scene where she's just kind of looking past the camera, smoking in her 1960s costumes, you can just see, like, in every in every frame, it's boy, this is great, man. I'm good. Oh, I'm nailing this character. Oh, I look great in this. It's like I I could feel the egotism and the self adulation in every frame, and it only bothered me more. I didn't like this movie. 
<laughs> I could tell. I could tell. I mean, yeah. Um, so I'm guessing you wouldn't recommend it then. You would say... No, uh, don't give this movie any more attention than than it's already gotten. It's It doesn't deserve to make back the money she already had to put into it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I think. If you disagree, fight me in the comments. I'm up for it. And uh, otherwise, be our friend. Follow us on all the things on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Spotify, iTunes, podcasts, anywhere you get a podcast. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you think.